the latest tech. I'm Alexa. I can answer your questions. Interviews. And we are evolving and we are seeing an amazing opportunity that is happening. Accessibility. Accessibility is, is one of our core values. It's even a part of our mission statement. This is Double Tap TV Town Hall. Welcome to this very special edition of Double Tap TV, our Town Hall edition. Thank you guys so much for joining us this week. It's going to be a lot of fun as we talk all about the smart home. We've got a special guest lined up, plus a guest host. I am Marka Flalo, joined each and every single week on Double Tap TV by my co-host, Stephen Scott. Stephen, how are you feeling? Do you know something? I always look forward to doing this show with you, Mark, but this week it is an extra special one, and I am really looking forward to this town hall. Our guest host this week is a familiar face and voice on AMI. You see him regularly on AMI this week. Grant Hardy, thank you so much for being here with Stephen and I this week. Hello, gentlemen. You know, it is a pleasure to finally get to work together. We echo those sentiments greatly, Grant. And guys, you know what? We're talking all about the smart home this week, and I know that you guys are really into this one. But before we dive into your questions, which is what this is all about, this is this is what we want to hear. Um, I, I want to dive into the history of the smart home a bit, and courtesy of our friend and co-host of uh, Double Tap Canada on AMI-audio, Sean Priest. Let's take a listen. Thank you, gentlemen, and a very good day to you all. Have you ever wondered what life will be like in the future? We'll wonder no more. The boffins have done the computations, and we now know exactly how the house of tomorrow will be. Wrong presentation. The Monsanto House of the Future stands in Tomorrowland. Ah, yes, for decades now, we've been promised the futuristic House of Tomorrow. A house where every aspect of our daily living, from cooking, cleaning, to entertainment, would be taken care of with technology. In an ordinary house, we'd be talking about the refrigerator and freezer. But in this house of the future, we call them cold zones. Three of them, each lowered to handy position at the touch of a button. One zone for regular refrigeration, one for frozen, and one for irradiated food. So, where is it? Is it here yet? Well, we do have smart homes. To be precise, we actually have smart home devices. There's smart plugs, smart speakers, smart thermostats, smart vacuum cleaners, light bulbs, washing machines, cookers. There's so many smart devices and there's more coming on the market every single day. But what are they? What makes a smart device smart? Well, basically, a smart device means it's something you can control over a network, such as the internet. And also, it's something that can be controlled by another device, such as an app on your smartphone or a smart speaker. Take a light bulb, for example. You can turn them on and off, you can set the brightness, you can set the color. So cool. As a nerd, as a geek, I love this stuff. But more importantly, as a blind or a visually impaired person, or whatever the disability may be, it's more important than that. Because having a device where I can choose how I control it means that I have more options, and in that case, more chance of it being accessible to me, or the way I want to control it. So, if the physical buttons on a washing machine isn't accessible to me, well, maybe the smartphone app is, or maybe I can control it with a smart speaker. More choices means more accessibility, which is great. So, is the house of tomorrow here today? Well, you know what? Actually, I think it is. It's just that no one noticed. It sort of crept up on us. With technology I've got in my house today, I can set an alarm and be woken up to my favorite music or radio station. The smart thermostat in my house will set the temperature to something I just love. And my smart vacuum cleaner will trundle off and start cleaning the house. And all this without me having to lift a finger or even get out of bed. Beautiful! That's definitely one way to look at it. Stephen, you know, one of the side benefits of smart home devices really is how they can help people with disabilities. Absolutely. I mean, there are some really simple ways that smart home devices can help you. Um, so, you know, let's think about smart speakers first. 
I use mine to help me set reminders, for example, so I don't forget to do things. Or, you know, if I want to check if it's raining outside, you can't always hear the rain if it's windy, right? So, you know, that can be really useful. But then I also use it with other smart connected devices, like bulbs, as Sean says. So I can automatically turn on the lights when I'm coming home, or I can make sure that everything's turned off at night. And you can now even buy smart blinds to adjust if it's bright. It can even detect when the sunlight is hitting it, so it closes the blinds. Or it can open the blinds in the morning by setting a routine to do that, or even close them at night. And, you know, if you can't afford smart blinds, hey, there's even tech out there that allow you to smarten up your manual blinds and even curtains as well. Ideal for people who are in wheelchairs who can't reach or those who are elderly. And even better for people like me who are lazy. <laughs> Grant, is there a device that you use that you, you just can't live without now? Well, I would, I would probably have to say that it's uh, my smart speaker. And I, I do have uh, more than one brand of uh, smart speaker, but you know, it's incredible that if you think about it, a few years ago, even the most powerful computers out there that can crunch tons of data every second, it's actually been surprisingly difficult to wake up to your favorite online radio station or you know your favorite playlist. Now, finally, you know we have this technology where it's just so easy to set that up through uh, through, through the app. So, like Stephen, I really do use my smart speaker and my smart hub uh, the most. It has really helped me out as someone who is uh, I'm going to be honest, a little bit absent-minded. That you know now I can just set my heat to go off or my lights to go off whenever I leave the house you know, quickly add reminders and notes so that I don't forget to do things because believe me, I will forget if I don't do it. Um, so truly, it's it's just opened so many doors. But again, as Stephen said, uh, you know, for people who have difficulty uh, uh, even, uh, you know, moving, uh, it just opens so many more doors for those people, those individuals. Okay, guys, these town halls are all about your questions at home. We invite you to join us and send us your questions. So let's dive right into an example here of how this town hall is going to is going to run today. We're going to bring up your questions and we're going to answer them. It really is that simple at the end of the day. And we've got a special guest lined up as well who fits perfectly into this conversation. So without further ado, why don't we go to the first question of the day from Jessica in Montreal. My question is, is there a brand of lighting or light bulbs that you recommend I go with for automation in voice control? And while I'm asking, what about doorbells? Do you have any recommendations for those? Thank you. Stephen, why don't you take this one? Well, for light bulbs, personally, I would go for the Philips Hue range. Uh, you know, I have tried a, a different number of brands and I found this the most easy to use, the most accessible, because one of the great things about the uh, Echo is the fact that the new ones have got a hub built in. And with Philips Hue, you can just add the light bulb with your voice. You don't have to do anything. You don't have to download an app. You don't have to connect it to your Wi-Fi. For doorbells, I would go for the Ring doorbell. Now, why? Not because it's the most accessible, not because it's the best one. I, I just, that's the one I got first. Um, when video doorbells came out, I got the Ring. I love the way that you can connect it up to your uh, Echo device, which actually was as a fairly recent advance. Uh, but what it allows me to do is actually talk to my front door using my Echo Dot. I don't have to see who's at the front door. It doesn't really help me to see that. And actually, sometimes on the app, it takes a long time to load up. So the guy's gone, you know, by the time you get to the, the door. Um, so, you know, for that reason, talking via the dot, it's so much quicker. I just say, Lady A, answer the door. And that's it. I'm talking to the person at the door, leave my parcel, and off they go. And that's it. Everything's good. So I think it's a really nice system. It's built in with the Lady A devices, the Amazon Echo devices. Um, I'm sure there's a lot of other brands though, Mark. I'm sure you've tried a few. Oh, I definitely have, but uh, let's go to Grant. Yeah, you know, living in Vancouver and living in a very, very tiny uh, condo, um, I don't have a lot of experience with doorbells. What I would always advise though is to get something as uh, platform agnostic as possible. So I, ideally, um, unless you know you're committed to a smart home platform, I would get something that works uh, with all three of the leading platforms, HomeKit, you know, Google Home, and uh, 
Amazon uh, because you can even usually use that technology with multiple platforms simultaneously. That's exactly what I use around my home, uh, Grant, is I use the Lutron switches with the Caseta hub. It supports over 100 devices, including ceiling fans, and you don't have to worry about changing individual light bulbs. You can now group things together, obviously, on a switch. Uh, let's go to another question here from Lee in Arkansas. Hey, guys. Lee Bentham from Arkansas here. I haven't gone out and bought a smart speaker yet. Uh, you guys always rave about the Amazon Echo. I know the skills are far more advanced than other speakers, but uh, what other smart home-related features come built in that aren't just skills? You know what, Lee? That's a great question, but an even better segue, because our next guest might just have the expertise needed to cover that topic. So let's take a quick break here on this Town Hall edition of Double Tap TV. I am Marco Flalo with Stephen Scott and Grant Hardy. Double Tap TV's Town Hall will be right back. This is Double Tap TV Town Hall. We're back on this Town Hall edition of Double Tap TV. I invite you guys to get in touch with us. As usual, our email address is feedback at ami.ca. And you better be following us on Twitter, guys. It's at Double Tap Canada. And now on Instagram, we are Double Tap Online. Actually, Double Tap dot online, Stephen. You see, this is what happens. I'm all flustered. Uh, I am Mark <laughs> Flalo with Stephen Scott and Grant Hardy this week. Stephen, we've got a special guest joining the show right now. That's right, Mark. She is the Alexa Canada Country Manager for Amazon, Celine Lee. Thank you so much for joining us here on Double Tap TV's Town Hall, Celine. Thank you for having me. Celine, before we took a break, we had a question, and I thought, let's wait for someone who's a little bit more intelligent and probably far more experienced than I to answer that question. And that question came from a viewer uh, named Lee in Arkansas. So let's play that again for you right now. Hey, guys. Lee Bentham from Arkansas here. I haven't gone out and bought a smart speaker yet. Uh, you guys always rave about the Amazon Echo. I know the skills are far more advanced than other speakers, but uh, what other smart home related features come built in that aren't just skills? So I think, Celine, clearly you are the expert here. So what do you say to that? Well, you know, Alexa is all about convenience. Um, the convenience of being able to listen to music using your voice or asking information while your hands are busy in the kitchen, listening to the news in the morning as you get ready. Really with a connected home, you can simply ask Alexa to, let's say, turn on your lights or turn down your thermostat or turn off your sprinklers, call your mom and so much more. Uh, as we look into the future, it's really about, um, you know, technology being there when you need it and fading into the background. And so that's where we, we see the, the journey with, uh, with Alexa. Grant, what are your thoughts on, you know, the things that are built in that you don't necessarily have to add those skills to? Well, you know, I'd point out a, a few key things. Uh, some of the latest Amazon hardware can actually act as a smart home hub, which is great because sometimes it's hard to get, you know, 20 different smart lights and smart plugs and all that, uh, all that jazz on your network. Uh, you don't want to have all those on your Wi-Fi and Bluetooth can be a bit flaky. So having that sort of hub uh, bridge functionality built in is really cool. And I've also seen some really neat tricks like a, a built-in temperature and uh, humidity sensor, which is really great because I imagine you could use that to control your home and uh, uh, just sort of monitor your home. But I would come back to those skills as well because it's just such a, a, a great way of adding smart home support to pretty much any device without having to wait for it to kind of be, you know, blessed or, or added by Amazon themselves because anyone can develop a skill for, uh, for the Echo, for Alexa, and you've got your, uh, your new smart home gadget all set up and working. So I think it really works as steward of your, your home in a really cool way. Yeah, I mean, like Grant says, I mean, I go back to these connected devices. I mean, earlier I talked about smart blinds or adapters for, you know, existing installations. But there's also a fab little device I heard about from a company called SwitchBot that is ideal for just switching on buttons, light switches, anything really that's a button that you want to make smart. Now, why would you want this? Why not just get a smart switch, right? Well, I've got outdoor lighting in my house and it's controlled by an indoor switch. Uh, but the switch, the bulbs, they're not smart and they're not very easy to make smart either. So I can use SwitchBot to allow my Amazon Echo to switch on those lights with my voice now. And, you know, there's lots of new devices coming on stream like this. It really is up to our own imaginations 
as to what we can do with these. Selena, have you, uh, you know, in your experience, you've been at Amazon, you said, you know, off the air, we talked about eight years and, and a lot of time of that with Alexa as the boss. Is there any skill or anything that you, that stands out to you as really kind of like, oh my God, I can't believe they did that. And, and you almost feel, you know, that proud moment of being there in the company? Well, you know, we have uh, thousands of skills available in Canada. Um, and the, the thousands of developers behind there are creating localized content for our Canadian customers uh, with top developers uh, like Bell Media, Rogers, Sport Media. But, you know, as a, when I look at my, my uh, most recent discoveries, there's skills for everything, literally. Uh, we use a skill at home for uh, brushing the teeth with my kids. It just tells them when to switch, which side, and it's been fantastic and lifesaver. So there's really skills for everyone and every use cases. Let's get to another question here. You know, it's amazing how these questions seem to fit with our theme. Um, obviously, I could see how Alexa makes business sense for Amazon, especially with their storefront. But how does it make sense for Amazon to have their own speaker or smart home assistant with all the other services they offer? Yeah, and you know, the, the original inspiration for the Amazon Echo was the Star Trek computer. We really wanted to create a computer in the cloud that is controlled entirely by your voice. Um, you could ask it things, ask it, it to do things for you or find things for you and easily converse with it in a natural way. And we're ways off from that, but that was the original vision. We do believe that voice technology is fundamentally improving and simplifying the way we interact with technology. And Alexa makes millions of people's life easier and more convenient. For some, like the blind or elderly, Alexa can really be life-changing. So that's this focus of making customers' life easier that I think is, is behind it. And, and, you know, it's fun, too. I mean, you're absolutely right, Celine. It is a product that can really enable blind people to have a, a really independent life. It's changed a lot of things in my life. In fact, it's reduced a lot of the technology that I have on my desk. In fact, you know, actually right over here, I've got a talking, an old style talking clock, right, that I push a button and it tells me the time. Um, and the thing about this is it's great, but that's all it does. Um, I can have the same device of the same size and it can tell me the temperature outside, it can tell me whether it's raining or not, it can you know, connect to my lights in my office so that I can turn them on and off or dim them if it's getting a bit too much. I can play games on this device as well, I can talk to my family if I've got the screen, the, the version of the screen, the Echo Show, I can see my, my friends and family. You know, it, it's a fun device but it's a useful device um, and I think the idea of technology that is you know, bringing about an age of this buttonless, screenless computing is going to change things long term. You know, the idea of typing a search into a computer is going away. And these devices are enabling that and making it easier for people who don't understand technology to get on board. Well, you know, I think it totally makes sense if you consider that uh, Amazon uh, is really a very customer focused company where they really kind of thought of things very well from from end to end. I mean, you're talking about everything from ordering to, you know, the experience of having your products uh, delivered to letting people know whether they like the product or not to, uh, you know, entertainment, you know, watching movies and TV shows at home. And I think that there's no doubt that, I mean, look, computers are not going away anytime soon, but sometimes that voice input and output really is the most convenient way to get information and interact. So for example, like there is nothing more cool than the Fire Stick, uh, Fire TV Stick with Alexa remote, where you know you don't have to go through a lot of menus, you just say, play Superstore on, ne on Netflix and bam, you're there. But you know, you also have those features like Hey, you know, I didn't really love this book that I got, but you know, this this other product that I ordered, the smart home product, I really did like. I'd like to review those now, but I, you know, I don't really want to sit down in front of my computer to go through a bunch of screens. Now I can just ask uh, the Echo to do that for me. So I really think that if you consider, you know, Amazon's goals, their sort of end-to-end -end goals, uh, it's really easy to see how a uh, voice assistant fits in. And what's really impressive is that that voice assistant is not only available on their products, it's available on third-party speakers as well. So you can get pretty much what any sh whatever shape and size uh, you want.
Celine, do you find that Canadians are uh, uh, outgoing in terms of their feedback? Do you get a lot of feedback from consumers and, and do you guys react to that? We, we do. We get uh, feedback and we, we hear from customers. Uh, and that's a, a big part of how we continue to improve the product. I think uh, Canadian customers are, are very, um, you know, like, like most sharing incredible stories like, you know, we hear across uh, all of our customers stories from people who've been uh, really, you know, seen Alexa as a life-saving uh, opportunity, like a customer who's uh, quadriplegic and started to use Alexa on Ferry TV, like Ren was saying, to now watch independently TV. So the feedback is very helpful and, and we, we love hearing from it. You know, how does it make you feel when uh, you hear that Alexa is not just being used for, you know, entertainment, shopping, but it's actually being used mm -hmm. <laughs> and there you go. I, tr I triggered the assistant, uh, but it's actually used by people with disabilities uh, to change their lives and increase their independence. Well, you know, I, I chose uh, to work in technology because I really thought I could have an impact. And so hearing these stories just uh, really reinforces that we we are um, able to to work on products that, that do make a difference. Um, so it, it is really uh, what we, we are striving for. And the pandemic was just another way where we saw, you know, from multiple people impacted the ways Alexa could, could help staying connected when you had uh, people in, for instance, nursing homes who couldn't, uh, you know, see their, their families for a long period of time with Alexa calling and dropping, letting people checked on loved ones. We really see the impact of, of that technology. And, and that's uh, something that's very uh, heartwarming. I've got a great use case, which is uh, we have a we have an echo in my mother-in-law's house, and we drop in on her all the time. But we also randomly play music on it, really, really loud at that wrong parts of the day. So she uh, she really hates us for it. But I guarantee you, it gets a phone call immediately. Um, Celine, another question here by email comes to us from Jason in Edmonton. He writes, "What kind of other benefits can you see coming in years from now as technology gets faster, smarter, and better?" You know, the, the vision for Alexa is really this idea of ambient um, AI where Alexa is here to help, but also fades in the background when we don't when you don't need it. And so I think the in the future we'll see improvements in AI, edge computing, uh, several technologies that will help um, make this experience more seamless. The idea is that well, you shouldn't have to learn how to use the, the modality. It, it should work as well for a group of people as for an individual. And um, I think the, the future will be in, in that in, in those you'll see those types of improvements as we continue to um, to develop those technologies. I think. Um... Personally, 5G is going to make a big difference. And I think this will actually help people who are older, people who are nervous about technology, people who don't have an internet connection at home, or at least a decent internet connection at home. Um, although I'm sure um, Lady A, as I like to call her, uh, doesn't use a huge amount of bandwidth. But, um, you know, 5G will enable, uh, I think, the potential, and I'm, you know, I'm just guessing here, but I'd love to see an Echo Dot with a 5G connection built in. In the same way, actually, as you did with Kindle. Uh, you had the 4G option, which I, I think it was 3D, 3G actually at the time, where you could actually get a connection. If you were on the move, you could you could browse the, the Kindle store, you could get books on the move. Um, and that was all you could do with it, but it was perfect, right? So the same could apply here with 5G. I also think um, the Echo Show 10 has given me a great idea and you're free to have this, Celine, if you want to use it. I don't mind. I'll take a 50% cut of this idea, though. Um, an echo on wheels. I think this is the answer to everything. So this thing now, its little screen moves around. Well, hey, add some wheels to that. And you know what? If you want it to be ambient, give it arms, and it can go into the cupboard by itself. So that's like a telepresence oh, like robot with, a, with an Amazon Echo on the top, right? Exactly. What a brilliant <laughs> idea. And, you know, I could go get things from the fridge. Uh, it could be, you know, it could be useful to, to do some uh, some chores around the house. Brilliant. I'm sure Celine is jumping to bring that idea back to her bosses right away, right? I'm sure that's not the case. <laughs> <laughs> Celine, are you okay to stick around for a bit? Because we got more questions for you, but we got to take a quick break. I hope you're okay to stick around. No, I'm, I'm okay. This is a special edition of Double Tap TV, our town hall edition, talking all about the smart home. We'll take a quick break and be right back. Double Tap TV's Town Hall will be right back. This is Double Tap TV Town Hall. We are back on this Town Hall edition of Double Tap TV, talking all about the smart home. 
I am Mark Aflalo with Stephen Scott and Grant Hardy, a familiar face from AMI, of course. And we're excited to be joined by Celine Lee from Amazon. Stephen, you got a question. Uh, I know you wanted to talk about Celine's time at Amazon. Yeah, I just want to know, uh, you know, I mean, I know you've talked a little bit about this, but, you know, tell us, go back a bit for us and maybe talk a bit about starting at Amazon and uh, what that experience has been like. I mean, obviously now you're working in this particular field, which is which sounds incredible, but you know, what's it like working at this company? Let's be frank about it. it. It's taking over the world in terms of stores, in terms of all the things we do. It's taking up all my cupboard space uh, with boxes. Uh, you know, what's it like working there? So, you know, my my current role at Amazon is Alexa country manager in Canada. And really my team's mission is to work smart on delivering products and services that are delightful and locally relevant to customers in Canada. And we work on everything from product launches, like launching a new Echo devices to new skills partnership, like for instance, working with Apple or Spotify to make their services available through Alexa. And then we do some more consumer focused campaigns, like for instance, what should Alexa's responses be for Canada Day or, or each NHL game? Um, you know, overall with Alexa and at Amazon in general, it's been a great professional opportunity. Uh, the best part for me is, is first that I really get to um, have this opportunity to work on and directly influence products that make the life of customers easier. Uh, and that is true across uh, all of the roles that I've had at Amazon. And then secondly, this role gives me the ability to bring people together, which have different backgrounds, different expertise to create something uh, together that is better. And this is, um, you know, critical and very important also when you think about uh, the fact that all of our customers are different and unique. And so having that diversity of people in the teams is, is very important. You know, it's so it's so refreshing to hear um, the personal, you know, angle for a, a company like Amazon and, and what you work on it. This is why we have guests on the show, because we could sit here and regurgitate press releases and talk about announcements all the time. But letting our listeners and letting our viewers hear from people who work in the company every day really does put a face to the name and it really does bring it home and make it feel feel really nice. So, I, you know, thank you again for being here with us. And we've got another question here. This one comes from Wendy. She writes, is there an optical place in my home to put a smart speaker if I wanted to hear and I wanted to hear me on the entire floor? And that being said, my main floor has four rooms with a kitchen in the middle with one speaker. Will one speaker be enough? I know this is a pretty technical question, but what are your thoughts on that one? Yeah, we we really recommend Echo to be a communal device used by everyone in the home. So in this case, I'd suggest putting it in the kitchen um, so that all can enjoy or any other shared space would work. But uh, that being said, you know, I personally have Echo devices in almost every room of my house. Uh, it's been really nice to be able to call my kids. Let's say that dinner is ready. I can uh, do an announcement and, and call them back. Or, you know, when everyone is, is um, having fun, we can have uh, multi-room music and have a giant house party. So uh, the, the central location works best. Uh, and, you know, if you, if you have more, then you can enjoy different features. So I absolutely agree that I would begin in a shared space like a kitchen and expand from there. So personally, even in my extraordinarily small place, I have several uh, smart speakers because uh, nowadays, I mean, you can get something like an Echo Flex that plugs literally directly uh, into the wall and actually includes a, a phone uh, charger as well. So you can stick that, you know, in the outlet, you know, next to the bed or something like that. You know, if you're brave, you can stick a speaker in the in the bathroom as well. But um, definitely going with that shared space will provide really the maximum ability to get what you want out of the device, whether you're asking about nutrition information or uh, you know, getting your notifications, but having a smart speaker everywhere in the home or as, as many places as you can will enable you to just walk around and continue interacting with the assistant. So you know, don't be afraid to start small, get one, put it in the kitchen, see how it goes. Uh, and then uh, expand as your means and your desires uh, permit. Guys, just put them everywhere. I mean, that's what I do. I, I, and you know what? Buy two of them and get two in every room because, you know, that's the answer. I mean, I have to do that because I've, I seem to have amassed more echoes than I have rooms in this house. Um, and, and I love them and I have them everywhere. And now I pair them up. You get a couple of echo dots. You can pair them together and create a stereo pair, which is really cool, especially when you want to listen to music. Then in the app, you can group them together as well. 
um, you know, either as a floor, so you could do your entire house uh, lower floor as as a as a group, and then all the music would play there, or you know, you can do it as the full house. That's what I do. I just have my whole house. I just you know say play music everywhere, and it does, and I absolutely love it. And it's possibly the best feature that that I love because every room it seems to be in sync all the way around my house. I don't know how they do it, but it's incredible, and it is just so much fun just going around the house singing my heart out and I will not tell you what to. You know what I love Stephen is that uh, technologically speaking it also knows where to answer from right because I've got one in every yes. single room as well and sure. yet if I'm shouting from the bathroom for example or like a laundry room the closest one to me always seems to answer or at least the correct one seems to answer which is pretty cool. Uh, let's get to another question here this one came to us on Twitter the question is can you elaborate a bit on some examples of the benefits of routines on the Echo or uh, things like automations obviously. Celine? Yeah, routines is actually one of my, my favorite uh, features. So it's designed to really make customers' days easier and more productive by bundling a few things that Alexa can do together, but seamlessly. So for example, if every morning you turn off your alarm, turn on a light, ask about the weather, and then check your calendar, you can create a single routine that does all of that automatically without needing to think about it. Um, so what I, I have at, done at home is a routine for bedtime where I say something, it'll play some calming music, and then it'll, it'll you know, turn the lights off and just, you know, you say one thing, it does it. It's, it's awesome. We recently um, launched custom routines and the ability for customers to share their favorite routines with friends and family. So you can turn your routine into a shareable URL link, which is awesome. So you, you go to the app, uh, select the routine you want to share, and uh, send it to, to people, either by text, email, WhatsApp, social media, anything you'd like. Uh, so that's been really, really neat to use and uh, has made our, our day really fun. You know, I have to say, I don't use them as much as perhaps I should. I can, I can hear what you're saying, Selena. I, I hear all the benefits. I just always think it's going to take a lot of time to do, to set up. I'm not going to understand it. But the truth is, when I did try it, and, and it's like anything else with this technology, and until you have a need for it, until you have a need for its use case, you'll you'll probably not touch it, especially in this kind of thing, because you've got to go into the app, you've got to go into routines, you've got to look this stuff up. Whereas when it finally came to my use case, what I needed to do was switch a little light on outside my office here, uh, because I'm working from home. And, you know, since the beginning of the pandemic, I've been working from home, even before that, uh, doing a lot of my work here. So... What I wanted to do was switch a light on in my hallway to turn it red so my wife would know that I was recording. Um, and it was as simple as that. So my wife could come up the stairs and she wouldn't sort of barge in or she wouldn't shout, you know, whatever. So that really helped. And I was able to do that through routine because I could not only do that, but I could also set my echo to not disturb me. I could set up my other office uh, lights to come on and, and set up a certain way. Really cool stuff that you can do. And like you say, you can group it all together. So, you know, at first I was a bit nervous about it. Wasn't sure how to do it, but it's actually really simple. Well, I think I think you guys said it all that it's, it's really about allowing the Echo to do more conceptual things. So that instead of saying, you know, set my thermostat to 22.5 and set my lights to 50% brightness, you give a command like, you know, hey, it's date night or hey, I'm leaving home or I'm going to bed and everything is sort of set as you like it so that you don't even have to think about it. You know, one really interesting uh, thing and one of the reasons why I got into this uh, smart home tech from the beginning is the guest problem where guests come over to your house, they start flipping switches and turning on lights and turning up the heat and whatever. And then now your guest is left and uh, you, as a visually impaired person, are, are not necessarily sure what all your gadgets are set to. And now you just give the command like, you know, I'm home alone or everyone's left, whatever. And things are set back according to your own preferences. So it's, again, a, a really uh, basically a simple way to write programs as such scripts, but without having to know anything about programming or scripting. Celine, I know we talked about, you know, the things that you love about your job. What's your day to day like? Like what's what's, you know, what's your nine to five? I'm sure, you know, you might be you have worked from home for a bit for the past year during the, during the pandemic. But what's a, what's a day to day, you know, for you, a day in Celine's life? You know, the 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 day changes a bit with uh, where we're at. You know, if we're about to make um, 
launch a new product or the types of activities we do will change. But I think one of part of the, my, my data that I enjoy most is um, to look at that customer feedback that we were talking about. You know, we, we do have, um, you know, we do take uh, care to look at the customer reviews, understand what customers are saying, and, and then thinking about how that maps out to, to the work we're doing. And so that's part of the, the daily routine that I think I enjoy most. Do you have a favorite moment, Celine, having worked on this product since it began? Ah, oh, a favorite moment. That's a tricky question. <laughs> there can be lots of them, but you have to pick your favorite. It's like picking, it's like asking somebody who their favorite child is. It is a little bit. Um, you know, I think really what is one of our, I mean, there, there's probably two things that come to mind. One is uh, when we were able to to do a, a celebration for Canada Day last year, we were, you know, in the middle of a pandemic and things were, were being very, uh, difficult for everyone and being able to, you know, bring um, real Canadian people to the experience with Alexa and sharing that moment with uh, with our customers of celebration was was really bringing a, a light uh, in the midst of everything that was going. So that was really um, a, a proud moment, I think. So I'm curious about you know, you mentioned really tailoring uh, the uh, Echo's responses to your locale and, you know, coming up with sort of acceptable responses to socially relevant questions. When you're rolling those out to hundreds of millions of users, is there a little bit of pressure on you to sort of get it right? Or how do you, how do you kind of make sure that you don't accidentally sort of miss the mark, but that re responses are, are what people are looking to hear yeah i think you know our our customers are keeping us grounded right if if we do not get something right from the beginning we'll we'll hear about it uh fairly quickly so uh we we do have that that pressure because we have this customer centric customer focused approach of making sure that what we deliver is what uh will be helpful um you know we really want to reduce friction for our customers that's that's our biggest um you know, one of our biggest focus. And so that naturally help us uh, put in place the mechanisms and processes to you know, make sure that you know, to the best of our ability, what we, we create and put out there will, will be uh, delightful and work well for our customers. Celine, we've got one last question for you before we let you go. It comes to us from JJ. So what can be done as a company as large as yours to ensure consistency across products and brands to make sure that everything and every product is as accessible as the one before? That's a hard one. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great question. Uh, I think, you know, we, this is essentially uh, built into the process in that designing uh, products starts the same way uh, by working backwards from the customer. And uh, we really want to have this ingredient of like designing and inventing products for everyone, including uh, every groups of people. And so that will help us keep that consistency from product to product, making sure that you know, we always look back at our at this goal, like, is this working well for everyone um, and, and keep it consistent. So, you know, we are ensuring that way that uh, customers are living the experience we strive to build for. Uh, and, um, you know, as part of our development process, we really really um, integrate that thinking about two questions, like how will we ensure this product is helpful for everyone? And then is there something we can do to uh, help customers? I'm sorry, my lights turned off. <laughs> it's all good. You see, this is what happens when you don't, don't say the word. Celine, thank you so much for taking the time to join us. I hope you had as much fun as we did. Um, please do come back in the future because we are only scraping the surface here when it comes to all things Alexa. Uh oh, I said it. Thank you for having me. That is Celine Lee, Alexa Country Manager for Canada. This is a Double Tap TV Town Hall. I am Mark Aflalo with Stephen Scott and Grant Hardy. We're going to take a quick break and we are going to wrap up the show. Double Tap TV's Town Hall will be right back. This is Double Tap TV Town Hall. We are back on this town hall edition of Double Tap TV. Thank you guys so much for being here and getting involved. We know it's hard, you know, to get up in the middle of the day and come watch a town hall, but uh, thank you for doing so. Email feedback at ami.ca, and you better be following us on Twitter. I, I, I swear I'm going to come out there and make sure you're following us. It is at Double Tap Canada. You like it when I threaten the audience, guys? Um, and, of course, on Instagram, it is uh, doubletap.online. I am Marco Flalo. The other voices you have heard are now on camera. Stephen Scott and Grant Hardy. 
Guys, we've got more questions, but how are you feeling so far? I think this has gone pretty good. It's going great. This oh. is really going well. And I think, you know, it's really good to hear about these developments, but it's also great to hear from the people who are behind the developments as well. So it's great to hear from Celine. Yes, this, is, this has been amazing. And Smart Home is... Uh, such a hugely beneficial uh, technology that I'm really happy to be able to talk about it today. Let's go to a question from Sarah in Manchester. This is a question for Stephen. Because of your law vision, have you found any surprising benefits to using your smart device at home? Uh, well, Sarah, in short, yes, there are loads. I mean, all the things I've mentioned already, I guess, but... I think mainly I'm so impressed at it being a voice activated and audio response device. I think that's what's cool about this. I mean, don't get me wrong. I was very skeptical at first as I, I think most of us were to be fair. Uh, but from day one, I was able to ask it to play my favorite artist and it would just go off and do it. Or it would tell me the time or notify me of an upcoming Amazon delivery of which there are always a few a day here. Um, you know, I love how more advanced it is than Siri. You know, it proves that the tech isn't as easy to produce or make happen as some might think. And I love that it's constantly developing as well. You know, I'm always impressed at how Amazon have built in accessibility, especially to like the Echo Show devices, right? That's the device with the screen. So, you know, even though it is a visual platform, we can still all benefit. And to your specific question, Sarah, about skills and ones I use every day that make my life easier, do you know, it's actually one of the built in features in the Lady A app. It's called the calendar. Sounds simple, um, but it's a big deal for me because being able to link my work and my personal calendar, you know, check that calendar, search the calendar, you know, when is my doctor's appointment? And it will tell me. Um, and getting notifications, adding things into my calendar, all from my Echo makes such a difference than trying to negotiate Outlook and you know umpteen calendars and different accounts. I don't have that problem anymore. So it really is something which makes my life a lot easier and helps me keep track in my home and work life, especially as I mainly work from home these days, like lots of us. You know, in terms of skills, I think it really depends, uh, you know, what I'm, what I'm feeling at the moment. I actually find that um, during the pandemic, ironically, I've been trying a lot of those entertainment skills, things like the song quiz. I've just had way too much fun with this thing where um, you pick a decade and uh, you're given several questions where you're asked to identify uh, a song, an artist, and you can play either with someone online or with someone in the in the room. And uh, it's it's like I said, just a, a little bit too much, uh, a little bit too much fun. Um, but uh, but um, I, I guess in terms of other skills, it would mainly depend on the devices that I'm trying to connect to, whether that be my calendar, you know, my smart uh, devices, my smart, smart vacuum cleaners, smart lights, that kind of thing. Um, but um, yeah, I mean, in terms of just the technology being beneficial to the blind and partially sighted community too, I think it's, it's like anything else where just like everybody else, we benefit from this tech but we benefit so much more because it just opens so many doors and makes so many things a lot easier. Guys, thank you so much for being my co-hosts here on this Town Hall edition of Double Tap TV. Um, it's been an awesome time. If you guys want to catch up with, uh, obviously, this Town Hall, in case you missed something, or some of our other Town Halls that we did, plus, of course, Double Tap TV on a regular basis, make sure you have that AMI TV app now available on Android as well as iOS. Thank you guys so much for being here. On behalf of our guests, Celine Lee from Amazon, Stephen Scott, and Grant Hardy, I am Marco Flalo. We will catch you again soon. Hosted by Marco Flalo and Stephen Scott, executive producer Marco Flalo, guests Grant Hardy, Sean Priest, and Celine Lee. Editing Marco Flalo and Stephen Scott. Motion graphics Will Attar. Voiceovers Anna Vicino. Production assistants Wendy Kaufman and Zachary Flalo. Integrated described video specialist Ron Rickford. Coordinating producer, Jennifer Johnson. Director, production, Kara Nye. Director, programming, Brian Perdue. VP, content development and programming, John Melville. President and CEO, David Arrington. Prizing provided by Belkin and Benji Lock. Copyright 2021, Accessible Media, Inc.